I was excited when it was announced. I was excited when it was released. I'm still excited now I've got one. Find out more right here on Gary Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back. If you've been here before today, I'm looking at the brand new Bell P39Q Aero Cobra in 148 scale from Armour Hobby. If you're thinking of buying one and want to see what you get for your money, this is the video for you. If you like the video, please remember give it the old imperial thumbs up on the like button below. And why not support the channel for free by subscribing? Make sure you hit the bell and be notified of all my future content. Now let's get on with a look at the Bell P39Q Aero Cobra in 148 scale from Armour Hobby. So here it is, the box of the P39Q Aero Cobra 148 scale from Armour Hobby. The product code right up at the top here is 40010. Very nice piece of box art of an aircraft taking off from Gilbert Islands, presumably. So, um, on the outside of the box, there really isn't very much on the outside. There's no commentary information or anything, really. It's the back that's the most important part on these Armour Hobby boxes. If you've not seen them before, they tend to do this way around. They have the three schemes that are supplied. Quite big pictures, so it's really cool. Um, so you can really see what you're getting for your money in a lot of respects. Now this is the Gilbert Islands, very famous um, sand and blue colours. The more usual olive drab and uh, neutral grey colours here of an aircraft from uh, California in 1943. And a Russian aircraft in the winter of 44 to 45. The Russians really liked these planes, this and the King Cobra. I'm not entirely sure why. But they did mainly, I guess, because that big gun in the nose. They liked a big gun on their aircraft. So, not very much to show you really on the outside of the box. Let's see what we get on the inside. Now, it's a side opening box, which is normally not a good thing because things fall out. However, it's a side opening box, but inside is a tray containing everything. So, that's quite cool. You get a bag with all the parts, a single cellophane bag here, but there is a, another bag on the inside with the clear plastic parts. Most people will do that these days. Um, interesting thing here is an erratum sheet, or errata sheet, there must be more than one error. Um, there's a, a part that's indicated here to go, it's wrong. You know, we'll have a look at that in a minute. And also some resin printed gear doors, which is kind of interesting. In here we have the instruction sheet, which also contains the quite large decal sheet, nice decal sheet, and the canopy paint masks. So let's have a look at all these different things in a bit more detail. Frame A is oddly the smallest frame, however, it is the largely concerned with the cockpit area, it also has the engine exhaust, so two different types, uh, the gear doors, which as we'll see later, maybe have been replaced, main gear, uh, just ancillary bits and pieces, really. This is frame B. Um, it has the fuselage halves, as you can see, the rest of the structure of the cockpit and cabin area, seating. It has the tailplane with the elevators, um, different versions of the uh, nose cover there, prop, uh, nose gear and the rudder and you, as you can see it's, it's pretty much crowded together this is very much typical of the armor hobby style is really cramming a lot of bits into one frame then frame c obviously the wings um, both come in as full halves there's no uh, clipping together bits of the fuselage and wing joints there um, an auxiliary tank various wheels um, some more propellers, obviously different options for the propellers, a couple of bombs and those wheel doors. Then there is a transparent frame, which is interesting actually. The, the sort of windshield and main canopy is one piece. The doors on this are like car doors, basically. The entire things are molded in, in uh, clear. So you just mask off the window bits themselves and then spray the whole thing to get your doors fitting so there's no need to actually put the windows into frames on the doors which is good because that would be tricky to do at this scale even at 148 
and some more light covers and I guess there's a armor plate or a gun sight and reflector something like that for the windshield as well the uh, kind of a close look at the plastic the rivet detail is really quite astonishing I mean, look, look around this it's fuel fillers I've no idea how they actually generate molds with this kind of riveting level of detail in them because remember these the the rivet bits that here are sort of little depressions in the surface in the mold they have to be sticking up slightly so i've no idea how they machine them or however you know using the uh electron electric discharge milling or whatever how how they actually manage to get that sort of detail on the mold surface is quite astonishing there seems to be little bits of kind of depression however on the wings but they are symmetrical and <laughs> you kind of, kind of assume they should be there um let's just check whether they line up with those let's try and get some light on here. okay big one and two smaller ones okay. they kind of seem to line up with these um parts here these three um structures here in the gear bay i don't know because that actually looks like a depression to me um rather than a discoloration it actually appears to be i mean you can feel it. You, can, you can actually run your finger over it and feel it i'm not sure how good that is um I'm going to guess that's something to do with the cooling of the plastic with the large chunk of plastic underneath. Maybe it sort of pulls down the surface, but that's not all that nice, to be honest with you. I don't think Aerocobra's had that. So that's not a good look, I'm afraid. Um, considering the reputation of Armour Hobby, and quite deservedly so, because the Armour Hobby Hurricane was awesome. Again, there's some lines around here that don't really look like they belong. We'll have to see what it's like later. Um, the mouldings are, are they undercut? Yeah, they're sort of kind of undercut into the joining edge. Um, here you can see it, the feeder goes into the actual ed joint rather than the, hopefully rather than the front edge, but it seems to do both actually. So <laughs> You you have both, you know if you're a fan of straight on feeds or you're a fan of undercuts you've got both on this. So far I'm not that impressed. I have to say it looks a little a little flashy at points, which considering this is an absolutely brand new kit, it's kind of surprising. And it's kind of surprising given the quality of molding as I said I've seen previously from them. I mean the, the intent the, mold, the intent of the molding is exquisite that the even the make a name on the tires and stuff like that and the, all of that is lovely and this these are patterns quite a lot some passing I don't know don't think these are paper they might be paper tanks and it could be intentional but I don't know if they were. Um, inside of the gear bay is all very nicely detailed as well. But again, it's those chunky, chunky sort of uh, supporting frames there that seem to have done a lot of potential damage. Have a look at the actual fuselage. Um, the lines are nice. They're good. They're clean sharp enough again these joints I don't, I don't like this joint i don't like this joint at all see the feet the way the feeder goes in there we go into that door section here on the sort of left part of that feeder it spreads out let just get something to point with um it's spreading out here over the joint which is you know okay so we can maybe trim that and get rid of it but here you can see there's this ridge that the seat sits into and it overgoes the ridge so that's going to make life really difficult 
I don't know if it's a different designer and they have different design opinions. But again, this is like neither direct onto the part nor undershot, it's both. I assume that's intended. I'll have to see. Yeah, it looks like it should be. But then I'm beginning to wonder sometimes. The uh, ejector pins are nicely got rid of anyway. They're, they're not going to get in the way of anything there. Yeah. I must admit, I am kind of surprised at some of the uh, some of the way this has been moulded. I mean, this is lovely. If the rudder with the uh, trim tab, it's very nice. Bits of the interior are good. These are the cockpit walls, all very nicely detailed. Stuff at the back here. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 pretty good. I'm I'm not going to say more than pretty good actually. Some of it is really nice, and some of it is a bit uh, soft in design and detailing. Which is really surprising to me. I mean, really surprising. I really don't like it when they put a feed right into the middle of a propeller as well. That's not great. That doesn't help anyone. Again, okay, it looks a bit, some of the mold lines here are a bit, a bit prominent. Bits of flash. Yeah, for a new mold, I'm surprised. Very surprised. To be honest, instrument panel here is is okay. It's got a little bit of detail right there, which it's sort of very very subdued. So it's going to be difficult to dry brush that. It might be better just to put the instruments on this as decals. Um, probably much more to scale than most places that give you really good amounts of detail you can dry brush. But then. With the scale effects, that's not going to be easy to see. Again, some of these parts, uh, they look okay. Look okay. Not as blown away as I was with the 172nd, I have to be honest. Okay, interesting. There's this errata sheet here. Um, what it shows is... Uh, there should be an um, event here on the fuselage. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, it's a little vent that sits here on the fuselage. And you remove that and you use this resin, little vent here, resin thing, to go on there, I think on the instructions it says put it that way around. In fact, you need to put it that way around, like a vent. And it, it's not a vent, it's an air scoop, in fact. So that's interesting. There's also a 3D resin printed pair of um, main gear doors. I'd have to compare them to see if there's any actual difference between the two. I suspect there must be. Otherwise, you wouldn't have put it in. Um, also, there's a link here that you can... If you've got a suitable 3D printer, you can download 3D printer files for the seat with the harness and cockpit bits and pieces and stuff like that from the Armour Hobby site. And in fact, there's loads of different um, 3D resin pieces that you can download for your 3D printer. But I suspect you need a good 3D printer, you know, high resolution 3D printer to do that. And as I was saying earlier, the doors come as clear plastic parts. You just mask off the actual glass area then most of the door you spray in presumably interior green um so a map case appears to have been molded onto that side there and the canopy itself is here all looks fine there's um a bit just at the base of the canopy which is gets painted so you can see it's slightly so we can get a decent there we go slightly frosted compared to the clear parts in fact most of the frames are 
very slightly frosted, which is nice because it means they'll take paint better when you come to paint them up, especially if you're spraying. Um, everything looks cool. There's no major, in fact, I can't see any main air bubbles at all in the frames. This is a very good sign. Yeah, everything looks good. The paint mask set is uh, very clean, like die cut, I suspect, on this yellow kabuki paper. There's inside and outside masks for the uh, car door windows, and then outside masks only for the rest of the canopy. And of course, there's masks for the wheels if you want to use them. The decal sheet is by Cartograph and is up to their usual very, very high standards. Colors look absolutely spot on. The registration looks amazing. Yellows are good, reds are good. That American dark blue is good. At first glance, everything looks pretty cool. So let's have a bit more closer look at some of the detailing here and see what we've got. Gonna start first with the instrument panel. This is our half millimeter. Pencil lead, as usual, you can see a lot of detail in here. But it's kind of slightly difficult to see because a lot of it's white out on a clear, on a very pale blue background. But once you put that on black, a lot of that is just going to leap out really nicely. That's all very good. The only thing that concerns me is this um, section here. Normally, if there's going to be a part that goes through there, like a gun sight, for example, the backing, the actually sort of stands out from this edge and it goes across the gap for that piece so normally you have to put that in and then trim that down or you can try and trim that down just that little notch before you put the decor on as well the um harnesses look uh, less than convincing to be honest i'm not a big fan of um decor harnesses I might see what these are like if I put them onto foil or something first to give them a bit of heft. Um, but that's a very sort of relatively bright yellow I'm not entirely sure about. Um, otherwise, a lot of the markings are really good. This is obviously the markings for the propellers. The stencil markings are really, really nice. As usual, absolutely crisp again way under half a millimetre tall and no problem reading them the uh set has got this is for the um the olive drab scheme there's a, another set um which is supposed to be i guess sand on black in the coral sand color but obviously i haven't actually printed any of it so it says to give you a an impression of where they would be rather than necessarily being able to read anything which is kind of strange i think it's very odd i'm not sure about that anyway uh the regular ones are as usual very 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 good to read the uh artwork very well represented as well these are definitely uh screen printed spot color these there's no CMYK printing here at all, it's all in spot colour, which is why these are very expensive decals. They will take like 20 pieces of 20 types of ink to make uh, the colours right rather than trying to spot uh, print them out of CMYK like some places will do. Again, here, really, really keenly done, really nicely done. Uh, stars and bars look good, that's old crow name soviet symbols as well yeah they look very smart indeed very very smart great color great great registration um there it is cartograph you know these guys are are the best the instruction sheet is very nicely printed it feels nice it's it's like nice glossy paper um there's a bit about you know a few basic warnings here then a bit about the P39 Aero Cobra, uh, missing the initial T there, by the way, guys. Just saying, um, and acknowledgements is maybe not spelled like that. Um, but then my Polish is rubbish, so who am I to say? It's in English and in Polish, as being a Polish made kit, of course. 
there's a quick uh, look at what the decal set looks like, uh, the frames that are available. Oh, incidentally, I should should have mentioned the kit comes with three uh, weights, steel ball bearing weights, um, which is really cool. All right, here they are. So there's no weights. It works very well on the 72nd scale. I'm going to assume it works well on the 48th scale as well. There's the uh, translation of the icon use here. And then there's the paint callouts, and the paints are, and they give you the, the paint names, and then the uh, equivalents in Hataka, AK, Humbro, Ammo, Mission Models, Vallejo, and Tamiya. Um, some of them are going to be close, but not quite right. Interestingly, um, Coral Sand and Sky Blue is the scheme for the uh, Gilbert Islands one. And no one apparently makes Coral Sand or that particular Sky Blue. All of them have got a little asterisk, which means similar colour, which is kind of odd that no one's actually gone the whole hog and made a Coral Sand or a Gilbert Islands Sky Blue before. I think it's really strange. Anyway. The equivalents are there, rough equivalents are Coral Sand about XF55 and Sky Blue roughly XF23, for example. They're also there in uh, 71, which I think are model air colours, uh, MMP. Ammo, these are going to be the original ammo colours, not the Atom um, colours. Uh, they'll be different. Humbro colours, of course, AK and Hataka. Okay, let's have a look at inside. The instructions I find with um, Armour Hobby actually pretty good. Um, they, they, they do use different views if you need them. Um, the instructions seem to be quite good and quite clear. I can't remember many times I've looked at any of their instructions and thought, I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, this is a bit of a weird thing. We have to bend something. There's a couple of times you have to bend bits, which I find strange. Um, but otherwise, you know, there's sort of things to show you where bits should actually end up and what they should look like from the side and things like that, which is kind of nice. There's the uh, nose weight ball bearings there. Um and some bits which you have to cut out for the radio set if it's um, the American versions. The uh, guns on the wings, if you're going to use those. Oh, it doesn't look anything absolutely terribly difficult anywhere. There's bits where you have to sort of sand and fill in to make things absolutely accurate. But generally speaking, they look very clear, very clean. And um, yeah, I'm sure these are going to be okay. As I say, on the 172nd, everything was pretty good. This is a decal to the inside of the door, because remember, you're going to paint that, and then you're going to put some decals on top. There's uh, a place for all of the stencils. Now, the sand color thing here, uh, where you've got the, de the second set for the Devastating Devil, the Gilbert Islands aircraft. Um, the ones in black are for the other aircraft. And then you have the schemes. This is the Gilbert Islands aircraft here. Devastating Devil. This is the same as the uh, 172nd. Then there's this scheme for an aircraft of 363rd Fighter Squadron um, in California in October 43. I really like the, the combination of the olive drab and the red trim on the stars and bars there. And that's actually really quite nice. That's probably the option I'll go for. And then at the back is the Soviet Air Force aircraft of uh, I don't know, 68 Squadron. I don't know what GIAP stands for. So anyway, it's a Soviet aircraft, which is actually quite cool as well. It's that, it's that same sort of thing, but yeah. Soviet doesn't interest me quite as much. I, th I think I think that one's going to be uh, that's the one I did for the one seventy second. This is the one I'm going to do for one forty eighth. I think it's nicer. And that's the instruction sheet. It is a really interesting kit and largely beautifully detailed. 
but I'm surprised at a couple of small mould issues, especially beneath the gear base in the wings. I'm sure it will go together well, though. If you like the show, please remember the Imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And why not subscribe to the channel? It doesn't cost you anything. And if you hit the bell, you'll be notified of all my future content as it's published. Thanks very much for watching today. Hope to see you again soon on the channel. Goodbye.